All right, he's Mega here. I've and I hear I got the my Victory Impulse TT. I've had the Impulse TT for almost for longer than a year now, longer than a year, and I've barely managed to put 3,000 miles on it. So I haven't really been riding it too much, um, but I do have a lot of fun riding it. So here you can see I've got 3,000 miles on it. So we're gonna do a 3,000 mile oil change. I just turn the bike on just so you can see that. I'll turn it off now. I did take it for a ride earlier in the hills to get a couple more miles in there and to, to, to warm up the engine. What you want to do is uh, you want to warm up, yeah, you want to warm up the engine and the gearbox just by riding it to to like uh, lower the viscosity of the oil and to get the oil like all over the place. And so, I mean, it's been kind of like sitting for like an hour. Maybe I want to go rev it a little bit, you know. So I've already got it on the rear stand. This is this video is more intended to be like a vlog, just to see what comes out of the motor. Um, honestly, it's been it's been it's been riding better after I after I did that 600 mile oil change. I re I immediately noticed it was shifting better. You know, it was a little bit smoother, and uh, and then now I feel I feel like the the gearbox is starting to get a little bit noisy. So maybe the oil level is a little bit low. I haven't I haven't checked it at all. So, um, but uh, what you want to do? I guess before we drain the oil, I'm gonna go run the, the motor a little bit. And maybe you just wanna put it, I don't know if you wanna put it in gear. I just, just run it just a little bit. I, I've been letting it sit for like an hour, so. Oh, that's 8,000 RPM already gets there fast when it's not on the ground. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So you get kind of the oil going through all the gears. You probably probably don't want to rev it that fast. Just just do like don't more like a constant thing. I was like, I was surprised it redlines that easily. <laughs> well, because I have the 13 tooth sprocket now. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, I've got my goodies right here, and I got my tool tool thingy right here. So we'll go change it. Um, so what I'm using for oil is the same oil as I used last time, AMS Oil Synthetic Metric Motorcycle Oil, SAE 10W30. So yeah, it's a really weird one. Um, 1030 is like the one you'll normally find. It's a little less than a liter. Yeah, it's a little less than a liter. It's like a quart. But uh, the last time we changed it, I noticed uh, this, was a, this was more than enough to fill up the thing. So a lot of people just say just dump the whole thing in there. but. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to open the weep hole, and then we're going to dump it in, and then when it starts weeping, that's when we, uh, that's when we change it. So, first step is to put it on a rear stand. Um, I think everything is supposed to be done on the rear stand. I hope this is okay. This looks okay. Yeah. All right. And then I got my little drip pan here, or a drain pan. And I love, this is my drip pan right here, just in case we make a mess. So you want to go put that under the bike already. That's another reason to have it on the rear stand, so you can put something underneath it easily. Um, and then uh, the first step is, uh, so this isn't really intended as a how-to. We're just going to kind of just check the stuff out. Let me go get a headlight so you guys can see better. Okay, so, uh, so we've already, um, you know what, this time I'm not going to, oh yeah, so th the last time I was looking at this, I remember this thing was like rubbing up on here. I might do something about that. It's still rubbing on there. It doesn't look like it's really damaging it because it's got this little cover on it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wrap a piece of rubber around this and zip tie it. So that way it won't chafe through that wire. Um, but uh, So this is after 3,000 miles. It looks okay. I don't see anything alarming, anything leaking. Um, except for the side of the gearbox. So there's, it is leaking a little bit as you can see. So it's leaking from that. I don't know why. Maybe I should have used a new um, washer, but it shouldn't be leaking. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up real quick. That, or maybe I didn't clean it very well. <laughs> the last time we changed it. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and clean that up. Okay. So I'm just going to wipe this down, clean it up a little bit. You know, it's been leaking a little bit. It kind of sucks. It makes it a little, it looks, it makes it dirtier. So 
so actually, okay, this is a good way to check the level though. So basically what we're doing right now is we're checking the level. So you use a five millimeter Allen wrench, um, the short end the, or the long end, and you can take this out. Okay. Hope you guys can see it. Oil may start coming out. That's a good thing. Okay, so some oil is dribbling out. That's a good thing. That means we have the right amount of oil in there still. So, so we're not running low on oil. So I'm just looking at it right now, and there's still a crap load of shavings <laughs> in that oil. Look at it. Look at it. It's um, it's almost like a. It looks like soap is what it looks like. It looks like you know the soap with glycerin in it. It's got the it kind of looks like it's got the consistency of soap. <laughs> it's, uh, so um, so this bike is still you know it's still breaking in man. It's still got so lots of shavings in it. I don't know how many diff how many more oil changes it'll be until it is um, it will come out clearish. Um, it's really just only the gearbox man. It doesn't go through the engine at all. You know, I mean, I mean there is no engine. Um, all right, so I'm gonna move this to the side a little bit, but yeah, you can see that. All right, here's we go. Okay, so the last time I did this, I cracked open that that screw there, the filler screw, um, I'm not going to do that this time, um, because, because I did that just to vent the, or like to, uh, yeah, to basically vent the, um, the transmission, but, uh, I don't need to do that because it has a vent right here, and this is where we're going to be filling it up from. So go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the little bracket it's in, maybe just a little bit, just like that, oh, okay, whatever. Um, and then uh, we're going to go get a, get a screwdriver. Hang on. Does it work? Just in it. I probably should have loosened it while it was in the bracket. <laughs> Let's get it loose enough to take that plug off because we need to take the plug off. Yeah, it's in there pretty good. All right, oh, I'm gonna work on taking that out. All right, it's, okay, I got the plug out. That's what it looks like. It's basically a plug. It's a plug with like kind of like a cap on it, and then and then there's like little holes on the side for the vents. So it's just to keep nerd out, you know, type of thing. Um, but yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Actually, it looks a little dirty in there. I must have came out from uh, came out of this. Came in there when the uh, thing. But yeah, so you can see that's the motor. <laughs> the motor looks a little, um, it's got some like, it's kind of like mold growing on it or something. Um, the finish on the motor is not very nice, man. I wish they'd like put some kind of clear coat on it so it wouldn't do that. Because <laughs> it looks, it looks yucky, man. Look at that. It's 3,000 miles, man. What's it going to look like after 3,000 miles? <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. So yeah, you want to take that out. So you can, uh, so we can get our funnel in there. And okay, so I went and got the funnel. Last time I used a shorter funnel. It's it's a lot easier. I just put it back in the bracket. I don't think you really needed to take it out of the bracket. It kind of helps to take the plug out if you take it out the bracket. But um, so I went ahead and put a longer funnel because I use a shorter one and I had a little bit of a hard time getting the oil in there last time. Um, so yeah, and then now we're gonna go drain the drain the rest of the transmission. For that you need a 17. Like I said, this is not really a how-to. It's just we're just gonna. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna explain what I'm doing, and then uh, and we're just gonna we're gonna do do thing. Um, actually, before that, we're gonna go clean that area off a little bit. It it is dry, so it is not leaking from here. So I feel that I remember the the little uh, copper gasket it was a little too too uh big last time but it actually works okay so we'll stick with that it's not leaking at all unlike the one on the side okay so this is a 17. 
It's a little hard to get out of it. It's not one to, it's not one to come out with my hand. Let's see if you just a wrench. Like it's got some kind of locking compound on it. Okay. Here we go. What's it gonna look like? Boom, there it goes. Yeah, it's still got a lot of shavings. A lot, a lot, a lot of shavings. So this is uh, the reason I want I wanted to change the oil also right away is because we're going to the racetrack this weekend and I want to I want some fresh oil in that transmission before uh, we go. So yeah, there it is. Looks like kind of like a like a gray milk. <laughs> it smells kind of funny too. So here's the. So it's not clear at all, I'll tell you that. Like, I guess it's kind of clear when it comes out, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot of shavings in there still, man. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, I haven't had it this bike for too long, so it's probably going to do this until maybe we get to 10,000 miles or so. So, so that's, what the, um, that's what the plug looks like. I will do a before and after shot. I'll show you how much um, this... It's not supposed to look like this. It's not supposed to be all hairy and stuff. It's like a, it's a, it looks, it reminds you of a sea urchin. That's what it reminds you of. Or kind of like a, yeah, kind of like a chestnut sort of. Okay, so just leave that there. Take some pictures of it before, uh, before we go and uh, do the thing. All right, so we'll just let that drain. Um, yeah, we'll just let it fully drain for like 20 minutes or something. So, in the meantime, I will go clean that plug. Also, right. yuck! What a mess! I'm totally gonna just throw this glove out right now. So, it's, I got oil all over my hand. So you can see, the oil is pretty clean. The oil is clean. It's just it's got a lot of those metal particles in it. It's not like it's not like a motor oil. Um, when you take motor oil out of an internal combustion engine, it's black. It smells like gas and stinky. And sludgy. This is not. It's still. It's still liquidy. It's still. You know. You can tell. It's still doing. It's. It's still lubing it. So I. I feel that. I feel that like, after. Uh, after the transmission gets. Uh, broken in. Like there. You get. Don't get any more of these metal particles anymore. Um, it'll be. Uh, you probably won't need to change the oil very often because. It's like honestly, I, I feel thirty thousand miles is too much. Like the oil still looks good. After 2,500 miles, or 20, 2,400 miles, 2,400 miles, yeah, that's 2,400 miles technically, not 3,000, but, but it still looks good. Um, it's just w without the exception of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of freaking metal particles in the oil, like that there and that over there. Pretty, pretty funky. But that's okay. Um, it's it's probably gonna go away after a couple oil changes. It's still it's still kind of in the break-in phase is what I'm going to say. Um, you're supposed to change it at 600 and then after that 3000 after that is what the manual states. So we'll, I'll actually we'll go pull out the manual and we'll take a look at it. Alright, here's, right, here's me here. I got the Impulse TT Riders Manual. Let's just go read the break-in period. Um, I think I'm done with the break-in period already but we'll just go over it. Again, so if the transmission trouble should occur during the break-in period, consult the maintenance section of the rider's manual or the victory service manual. Well, I don't have a service manual. I'll see your dealer immediately. Failure to perform initial maintenance as recommended could result in less than desirable performance in the future. Well, it seems to be. I'll tell you this. It's been riding. The the more I ride this bike, the more it feels like it, it rides better. So it must be, you know, it must be breaking in properly. That's what I'm thinking. But anyway, so here... We got um, use normal mode, which there is no normal mode. There's an eco mode. <laughs> There's eco and sport. There's no normal mode. I found that kind of funny. Maybe the maybe the Bramo Impulse has a normal mode. Um, but anyway, the first 600 miles use normal mode. Um, zero to 150. Don't operate more than 3,500 RPM. I I really hated that because <laughs> um, you couldn't even get it in the green. Um, and then 150 to 600 miles, no, no more than 5,000 RPM. So we pretty much, and then after after that at 600, you change the transmission oil. 
So you should be performing a pre-ride inspection before each ride. Yes, we sh that's true, <laughs> but I don't. Um, perform periodic maintenance at least once a month, no matter how often you ride. And perform an oil change every 3,000 miles and any other maintenance as determined by the maintenance schedule. So every 3,000 miles. So, so technically, I really didn't need to change the oil till 3,600 miles, but I'm going to do it now at 3,000 since... Um, 3, 3,600 miles is an odd number, so <laughs> I, I would rather be like a car, 3,000 miles. So the next time I change the oil, it's going to be 6,000 and 9,000 and 12,000, you know, you, you get the picture. Um, so yeah, uh, that is, uh, so that's what, that's what, what's going on right now. But, uh, so what I'm trying to do is, uh, trying to get ready to go to the track. I want some fresh oil and transmission before we hit the track, so. So, so yeah, right now would be an okay time to change it. Plus, it's still, as you can see, it's still coming out pretty nasty, like lots and lots of metal in the oil still. So it's until that, until that um, goes away, I'm pretty sure the bike is still kind of trying to break itself in. So it's taking a while. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's the, here's the drain plug. It looks a lot cleaner. You remember what it looked like before? I have a before and after picture. I'll show you right now. And yeah, so so this is what it looks like now. So I just made sure I cleaned everything. I cleaned all the 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 weep plug right there and the the copper O-ring, uh, copper copper washer. Uh, make sure you don't drop that somewhere because it'll pick up dirt and stuff because <laughs> it's magnetic. Um, and then uh, so we're pretty much ready to put it back in. Um, all I have to do is clean this guy. I have to make sure I put it in the right way. The way I had it before, I think. I think I don't remember. <laughs> I can see it has a little indentation on this one. So this one, this one must be this side. The side that's facing up must be the side that goes down on the the drain plug. So I'm gonna go clean this a little bit. I didn't clean this one yet. All right, cleaned it. So what I've been doing to kind of to clean these this stuff before we put it back on. Also, I made sure to clean this the the weep hole. And the bottom of the where the oil is straining out, I'm probably gonna clean that one more time because I bet you it's still probably dripping. And then and then we'll put everything. We'll put we'll put the drain plug back. Yeah, I'll put the drain plug back in. Um, yeah. So what I've been doing to clean it is I just get the napkin and then like I'll I'll wipe it and then I'll move it to a cleaner part of the napkin and wipe it again and just keep on doing that because the uh, the the drain plug was the worst because <laughs> there's so much metal shavings that came off of that thing. Um, I had to rotate the, the napkin like so many times. So I'm just going to put that on there like that. It actually fits on there. Oh, well, yeah, there's a little bit of play. I'll just um, try your best. I'm just trying to try my best to get it in the center is what I want to do. Okay. I saw a little drippy droppy earlier. It's just still dripping, damn it. So but I don't really want to wait anymore. So I think that's the majority of it. I'll just wipe it with the napkin. Put the plug in. Hopefully, put the plug in straight. Okay. Yeah, it's a little hard to to get this plug in. I don't know why. Like there's stuff in the in the threads. I tried cleaning it as good as I could. I remember it was hard to get it off too. Yeah, I had to use the wrench to get it off most of the time. Okay. Just try your best to keep the that copper washer straight and there is no torque spec for it at least I don't think so probably probably in the service manual it does it doesn't tell you in the writer's manual just snug it's fine too tight and not loose either okay now it's time to start pouring the oil um so this is going to be the fun part all right so we put the oil in uh so last time uh i put the oil in and like right right um 
right at the last the last bit of oil that was in that in that container, it started weeping out. So uh, so I think this should be fine. I should only need one. Let's go open this right now. Our legs and hopefully legs. I remember I got this on sale at a, a Road Rider before it closed. So we're just going to go ahead and dump in as much as we can right now. 